Hello, hello, and welcome to Self Care is Sexy. My name is Chris, and I'll be your host. We're a podcast that's here to generate and share self care ideas with each other. Last episode was all about hypervigilance, and I got into some really creative ways that you can use self care to help you heal from the damaging effects of being hypervigilant all the time. I talked about how little things like telling yourself you're not in trouble and dunking your face in an ice bath can really disrupt the patterns that keep our nervous system on high alert, even when there's no need for it. If you've missed that episode, you can always check it out on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podbean, Podnation, iHeartRadio, and of course at our website, www.selfcareissexy.com. I want to give you a quick preview of what to expect from today's show. Today I'm sounding the alarm and I'm cautioning you from starting any kind of new year, new you lifestyle trend. And instead I'm going to give you some real practical self-care ideas that are a million times better than any set it and forget it New Year's resolution you might be thinking of. We're going to get to all that and more after a quick break. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. It's the start of a new year, and you know what that means. The gyms are going to be packed this week. AA meetings are going to be super full, and everyone's going to be dusting off their budget and using their envelopes to save cash. Of course, January means everyone will be bringing their lunch to work, so don't expect there to be any room in the break room fridge for like a month or so. And of course, all of a sudden, our social feeds are going to be spewing with life coaching and ideas on how you can do and be more in 2024. Well, if that's the kind of content you're looking for, you are going to be sorely disappointed, my friend, because not here, folks, not this show. Nope, no fucking way. I'm not about to tell you how to do more. This podcast is on the far opposite end of that spectrum with the resolution bullshit, And I'm going to be practically begging you not to give in to the urge to overhaul everything in your life. Please, please, please don't get sucked into some weird-ass diet, a gym membership, or creating your 10-year financial plan. And for the love of dear baby Jesus, please, the goal setting, the resolutions, all that crap, leave it alone. Right now is not the time. And don't get me wrong, self-reflection is great and assessing where you're at and setting goals, all good things. Just not right now. Nope, sadoodle. Right now is not a good time for this bullshit. Look, if you're like a lot of us, you have just barely survived the holidays. You are peopled out, you've overspent, you overate, you're probably overstimulated, And uh, up here in the Pacific Northwest, we're all living in the dark with just a few short hours of gray daylight, if we're lucky. So it's not goal-setting season, folks. Right now, it should be all about hibernation and recharging that dead-ass social battery after the holidays. So instead of buying into the rise and grind culture and setting some stupid resolution that you're never going to follow through on, and then just end up feeling like a failure anyways, just just please practice some patience right now. You know we're going to get to the spring cleaning, goal setting, sun's out, guns out in just a few short months. So instead of signing up for life coaching or CrossFit or buying some random ass workout equipment for the new home gym you're planning, I've got 24 self-care ideas that are a million times more productive for you and then you're actually likely to follow through on versus a few weeks from now looking at all the cash-saving envelope binders under the desk treadmills and meal prep dishes that you're actually never going to use. So if you're really looking to make some lasting, impactful changes that are going to help you to feel good along the way, I've got 24 different self-care tips that you can use today instead of some bogus New Year's resolution. Number one, a thought detox. This year, instead of suffering through a fat, sick, and nearly shit in my pants juice cleanse, let's work on a detox that's actually going to be beneficial and create some habit change for you. We're going to work on identifying the negative thoughts that we have about ourselves, catching these thoughts, and then redirecting them to something that's actually useful. Now, this tip, like a lot of the other ones you're going to hear today, could have their very own episode. I mean, shit, some of these could actually have their very own podcast. 
but I actually am going to have a, an entire show about some of today's tips. But for now, I want to give you those quick Chris notes about these things so that you can start to work with them and then revisit these concepts throughout the year as you listen along to the show. So we're going to do a thought detox and we're just going to start by noticing when you're having shitty thoughts about yourself. I know that sounds really simple and easy, but you'd be surprised about how much of your shitty thinking is just on autopilot. Look for when you're rooting yourself to fail, you know, when you're putting yourself down. And if that's all you do, that's great. That first step is excellent. But if you want to take it a little further than that, the next step in this thought detox is about catching those thoughts and adding on to them. You want to add the yes and to any negative thought that you're having about yourself so that you're telling the whole story. So if a negative thought that you're having about yourself is like, I ate everything not tied down this holiday season, and now I'm a fat, sluggish piece of shit. If that's the thought, what you're going to do when you, when you catch that thought, when you hear your internal monologue saying that, you're going to say something like, yes, and I'm going to do something about it. Number two, you're going to develop a healthy relationship with social media. It might be time to take a break, but you know what? It might not. Maybe just pick one or two of your favorite platforms that you love and don't allow yourself to switch back and forth between all of them. So Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, X, whatever you're into as far as your social media, just pick one or two of your favorites and then delete the rest off your phone. And inside those favorites that you eventually pick, make sure that you're following positive content that makes you feel good. That's inspiring. One of the best ways that you can identify if, a, if content is good for you is that it feels good after you watch it and you're willing to set the phone down because you got what you needed. You got fed from it. You know, stay away from the sensationalists. And remember, you don't have to delete your whole friends list. I know a lot of people are going to be talking about, you know, Facebook, get ready for my annual cleanup. Well, okay, fine. You could do that too. But you can also just mute people. If you see that their content that they're sharing is just not in alignment with what feels good for you, just hit the mute button. Ignore those fools. Number three, instead of setting a New Year's resolution this year, practice naming your feelings. Let's, this year, let's all work on emotional intelligence, but not by upheaving everything or going through some intensive training or silent meditation or buying a bunch of new books. You can start small by learning to name your emotions. A lot of us only have about four emotions that we can easily and readily identify on a daily basis. This is a huge deficit and it does not serve us to not be able to identify how we're feeling. When you start being able to name the feelings that you're experiencing, you definitely open yourself up to a much broader experience and you're going to be able to find a lot more personalized help and content. So one of the ways that I've been really getting into this is I follow on Instagram because yes, that's one of the socials I'm into, Little People Big Emotions. And it's a, it's a parent support group and even though it's geared toward toddlers, it actually has a lot of really great content for those of us that don't have a lot of emotional intelligence. It gives us charts and the names of things that we're feeling and it differentiates between the different feelings and it even gets into how we can work with them. Number four, and kind of in that same vein, we're going to break up with beating yourself up. This is the year that you need to break it off. Mentally punishing yourself is fucking pointless, friends. It's really pointless. Now, this tip is not, you know, don't get me wrong. This is not free reign to be a douche nozzle and avoid accountability altogether. This just means that you're going to stop shaming yourself for whatever it is that you've done wrong. And you're going to learn from it. Make your amends and, and just try not to do it again. But what we're not going to keep doing is fucking up, beating ourselves up from it, emerging from that beatdown desperate for comfort and making shitty choices as a quick fix to help heal. Nope, not us. We're going to learn to talk like a compassionate, loving, wise friend to ourselves this year. Number five, another self-care tip instead of making a New Year's resolution is talk to the old you. Find the oldest picture that you have of yourself on your phone and ask that version of yourself 
what they want for self-care. And really sit with this for a minute. Talk to that old person, that old version of you. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm not mixing words. A few episodes ago, I was talking about don't compare yourself to your older version. It's not what I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about comparing yourself to where you once were. I'm talking about going back to that version that you once were and having a compassionate conversation with them. Tapping into that old version of yourself and saying, hey, what, what do you need? Knowing what that version of you is about to go through or what it was going through at that time. And listen for what that version of you, what comes up. There is wisdom in looking at that picture and talking to that picture as if you are a friend trying to communicate like, hey, what do you need right now? You're going to be amazed at how much that version of you is going to tell you what you need right now. Number six, value any point of interruption. We're not going to revamp our garage to create a new home gym this year. Instead, we're going to get into a more realistic and healthy project. We're going to start assigning value to any time we recognize we're giving ourselves a better level of self-care than we have been in the past. I'm talking about the power of valuing interruption in your old patterns. That's a lot different than comparing yourself to the old version of you. It's, it's just, it's so important that you celebrate and recognize when you need self-care. So usually the easiest and the most likely time for any of us to get self-care is just after a breakup. The juicier the split, the bigger the self-care. And this is a time when our lives are at, you know, at the everyday level. They're completely different. So you've got way more free time. You may be living in a completely different space, having different friends, or doing things alone that you used to have someone with you. Unless you're willing to exit a relationship right now, you got to implement practices that help you remember to do self-care even when it's not an acute situation. So every time you recognize like, hey, I need some self-care right now, bam, value that, celebrate that, highlight that, keep track of that, and start looking at how often you're doing that. Because the measurement of success is just recognizing you need self-care. Number seven, try laughing yoga. Super easy, very beneficial, and it's actually a method actor's trick, and it works. So your body doesn't know the difference between real laughter and fake laughter. So you trick your body and change your mood instantly. This can be done anytime, anywhere you need a quick little boost to self-care. How you do it? It's simple. You start by just saying, ha, ha. Then adding a ha each time. You do this five or six times at most and you will start actually laughing. And laughter, of course, is the best medicine. So there you go. Number eight, instead of getting hung up on a New Year's resolution or becoming the best version of yourself, stop future tripping. Look, here's the reality, folks. You don't know that version of you yet. Be in the present moment and work on what's working now. This is so important. I think the biggest thing that the self-help world is getting wrong is that it's pushing not only a bunch of fucking beauty products that cost a shit ton of money and don't make you feel any fucking better. I don't care how glowing your skin is or how much water you're able to suck down in a day. That shit is not what's going to actually make you feel cared for. What's going to make you feel cared for is being in the moment and working on what's working right now. It's about having your own back in the moment. It's about in your day, wherever you're at right now, taking a moment, maybe pausing this podcast, sitting there and thinking about what do I need for self-care right now? Stop planning for the you that isn't even here yet. Stop looking forward to, you know, June, July, August version of you. Stop thinking about the beach body you're trying to accomplish or the 10-year financial plan or the five-year coaching business you want to start. Instead, do what's actually going to make you feel better, what's going to make you feel supported, feel cared for, and allow you to achieve that in a way that you'll actually feel good once you get it. And that is taking care of yourself in the current moment. Not future tripping about what you're going to do later. Number nine, 
It's important that we admit that you don't care for yourself, that you don't meet your own basic needs. You got to start where the problem is. And frankly, setting New Year's resolutions, having these big lofty goals, taking these, you know, long weekend seminars about being a better you isn't going to give you what it is you're actually craving. And if you're listening to the show, what you're actually craving is some comfort. You're craving that feeling of being cared for and loved and nurtured. So instead of putting a band-aid over the problem, ignoring what's actually going on and going off on some New Year's resolution where you're juice cleansing or starting a gym or signing up for a color consultation or throwing out all your beauty products and starting over, all of those things are not going to achieve what it is you're really looking for, which is self-care. You're looking for your own love. And as soon as you admit that you've not been giving it to yourself, as soon as you realize that what you've been doing has not been recognizing your needs and fulfilling them, then you can really start at the basic level. New Year's resolutions always want to start at the highest level, and they want you to change everything that you're doing. And I promise you, whatever you're doing right now is just fine. You just want to focus on what's working and highlight what's working because what's already in place, what's already making you feel taken care of and loved and like you're the priority, you you just haven't recognized that enough. Admitting that you haven't cared for yourself or admitting that you've been shitty, downright shitty to yourself is freeing. Number 11. This year, we're going to learn to pivot. Now, here's the reality, folks. Your first few thoughts about yourself are not true. This is the most amazing tool in in self-care, and it allows you to see the whole conversation. It allows you to know the actual truth, and that tool is learning to pivot. Learning to roll away from whatever negative bullshit your mind is kicking up. And then learning how to add to that conversation in your head. This is actually so easy. It's kind of stupid. I'm going to do a whole show on this coming up later this year if you really want a deep dive. So make sure you subscribe either via Facebook or on our website, iTunes, whatever podcast platform you listen from. Because when you start to learn how to pivot your thoughts about yourself... You're going to change your perspective on the world and the things that seem impossible, these goals that you're trying to reach, that feeling that you're searching for, it will start to happen naturally because you've changed the way you think. And you have to start that with changing the way you think about yourself. Number 12, declutter. All right, here's the deal, folks. We're going to do what the smart, thrifty people of the world do. They shop off-season. So right now, all the Christmas stuff is going to be on sale. And if you're smart and thrifty, this is the time you start buying Christmas lights. Not yoga pants. Because you're going against the mainstream of people who are just going to do whatever's coming up next. Which is getting rid of the Christmas stuff and not thinking about it until next year. Well, like the thrifty people, we're going to go against the grain and we're not going to do what everyone else is doing right now. We're not going to try to start something new and huge and epic. We're actually going to do our spring cleaning right now. So let's get into it. Declutter. Start donating or getting rid of the stuff that you don't need or use, like lotions or soaps or the burnt and broken spoons on the stove. Towels that you might have that have holes in them or mismatched jewelry, old makeup, promo t-shirts you don't wear anymore. Even go through your fridge and get rid of those expired sauces that you can't identify or the canned goods, your spices, shit that you just don't use anymore, like Tupperware. These kinds of things, decluttering and getting rid of the stuff that you just don't need or use is going to free up your mind and your space and help give you that rejuvenation feeling that you're hoping to get from some wackadoodle resolution. Number 13, instead of setting a New Year's resolution this year, Let's start to fill up from an overflowing cup. Now, this is such a powerful concept. And honestly, I could do a three-part series on this. But the reality is that you're probably doing your self-care from the what's left over club. 
So you're so busy helping others and doing for other people that if you're lucky, you get some time for yourself at the end of the day or, or the week or even every few weeks. And then if, if you have the energy, you'll get some self-care, like a quick bath or a face mask or something. The reality is, is that you're missing an opportunity to feel better when your self-care is is bottom barrel crumbs. You might be saying, but Chris, how do I get self-care from an overflowing cup? Well, stay tuned, friends. That episode is going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Number 14, pace yourself rather than push yourself. How much of the pressure to get it all done is coming directly from you and your expectations versus coming like from external forces? Well, more likely than not, if you've listened to my show this long, it's you. Turns out, you're the unreasonable boss pushing yourself so hard. You're the unreasonable boss pushing yourself too hard. So use this new year, new me mentality and start looking for ways you can slow your roll and expect less from yourself. Number 15, it's time to get new undies and bras. Now, this tip is not just for the ladies, guys. Your drawers are out here looking like damn near see-through cheesecloth, and it's about damn time you upgraded. So if Santa didn't bring you any new briefs, just go be an adult and get some. They don't have to be expensive, but there is a very big difference between the Walmart value pack and Duluth, for example. Now, ladies, especially my new moms out there, ditch that nursing bra from way the fuck back when and go get fitted in an actual store and get yourself a new bra or two or ten. This is your yearly reminder that your over-the-boulder shoulder holder is as outdated as that phrase. Number 16, instead of investing in some meditation retreat or a completely new wardrobe, if you're really trying to get yourself back to your center and to feel cared for, or if you're just new to self-care and you've got no idea where to start, get into journaling. Now, you don't have to have like a shitty day to have a reason to write it all down on paper, and you don't have to spend hours doing this. Just make it a part of your daily routine. If you need prompts or encouragement, there are a ton of different guided journals out there. Some of my favorites have been the Zen is Fuck journal and the Let That Shit Go journal. I don't know if you can sense a theme in my journal preference, but I am a sailor after all. You know, and if you want to get organized and just jot shit down, I always recommend the Passion Planner. But as much as you want to download an app or get your iPad out and go that route, let me save you the money and the hassle. You're going to get way more out of a paper journal than you ever will an app. There is science that backs this up. Physically writing connects something in your brain that gets lost on electronics. Number 17. Instead of a New Year's resolution this year, change the wallpaper on your phone. New Year, New You does not need to include tossing out everything you currently do and changing your wake-up time to oh shit 30. You can white-knuckle yourself through a total transformation, or you can take the softer, more self-care approach and just change the wallpaper on your phone to something inspiring, maybe a message or a picture of a goal that you might want to achieve. Look, let's just use what we got, people. You look at your phone a million times a day. Why not have it double as like a micro vision board or just manifest your goal by seeing it every time you pick up your phone? Number 18, get a humidifier. Now, this tip is especially for my friends out here in the PNW where it's dry and it's cold and lacking moisture until you're drowning in it. So get a humidifier, add some Vicks or essential oils, And this is going to make bedtime seem like a spa day. It'll entice you to start that wind down routine earlier than 1 a.m. after a food flight through the fridge. Number 19, invest in a high quality scent. So again, if we're talking about this whole New Year's resolution, New Year, New You, and let's set all these goals, why not make it something that you can instantly do and just change up your scent? Now, when I think of folks that really take good care of themselves, they all smell like a million bucks. And hugging them is like a treat for your nose holes. So this year, maybe instead of hopping on whatever trend is offered up, Pick out a good, high-quality perfume or cologne and make sure that you don't just buy this shit off Amazon. Go into the last of the remaining retailers and actually smell this shit for yourself. 
that way you can see how it actually smells on you. But changing your scent, getting something new that excites you, that you like to smell, that little self-care can change your entire day. Number 20, a more productive use of your time rather than getting into New Year's resolution bullshit, wash your hairbrushes. Okay, so how often do we actually think about the tools that we use for self-care? Not that often, right? And especially not right now where it's nowhere at the forefront of the new year, new me makeover, but it should be. We use all kinds of tools on a daily basis for self-care that need their own makeover. This includes your hairbrushes, which could just be a simple quick scrub with some dish soap. Or you could do the deep dive and soak them in apple cider vinegar. And this tip goes for your makeup brushes too. Getting a new toothbrush, cleaning out the inside of your makeup bag, or get like a new countertop organizer for all your self-care products. It's probably time for like a new loofah or scrubby. So think about the tools that you use for your self-care, like an eyelash curler or a nail file or the pumice stone that you use. It's time to either switch out or clean out your tools. It's time to either switch out or clean out your self-care tools. Number 21, get new sheets and a pillow. So whenever I talk about self-care, the number one thing that people say they do for self-care is sleep. But let's be honest right now, you're probably not getting the best sleep. It's that time of year when we're all socially obligated and there's all these additional chores that have been associated with the holidays and we probably haven't been on our normal sleep schedule. Well, if self-care is something that you're working on, it's time to spruce up the bed. Time for some good sheets and a new pillow. You spend a major part of your life in bed. You might as well make it a place that you want to be in. A place of solitude and comfort. And even if it's not in your budget to get a brand new purple pillow and, and bamboo cooling sheets or whatever, it's probably been a while since you've even changed the sheets. So this is your little reminder. Number 22, focus on and track your small wins. Now, this is not complicated, but it does require some effort. What I'm talking about here is focusing on the things that you're currently doing right. I said this earlier in the show, but the things that you're already doing that are a part of your routine, these tasks that don't feel like there's really that much effort anymore, those are the things that need your attention. Not the new shiny idea from TikTok that tells you you need to slash and burn and start over completely. Nuh-uh. Look for the things that you're already winning at. So, for example, let's say a New Year's resolution vibe you got going on might be that you want to up your daily drip and you want to step up that wardrobe. Well, think of something you're already doing good in that area. It might be that you're really good at picking out your outfits and laying them out the night before. Or you use accessories really well or you have, like, great shoe choices. Whatever it is, focus on the thing that's already working. If your idea of a New Year's resolution is losing weight this year, and that sounds super appealing, well, start looking for where you've made good, better, or best choices in those efforts. Or let's say that the New Year, New You means having $10,000 in the bank before next Christmas. Well, look at where you're already making good financial decisions and focus on that. You might be paying your bills on time, or you might have a killer budget that's super easy and on autopilot. Whatever it is, just remember to focus on that and the small wins that you're already making along the way. Number 23, instead of a New Year's resolution where you're going to write down goals and do this gigantic vision board that you're eventually going to throw away and have to recycle, start a random new hobby. Could be something physical like a new sport or something spicy like pole dancing. Could be some creative thing like crocheting or joining a book club. Find something new that's going to get you outside of your routine. Something that is for you, not your kids, not your spouse, and not anyone else. This is a new hobby that's about giving you some much-deserved time. Could be going to a shooting range or building Legos, whatever sounds fun for you. And instead of committing to a gym or signing up for a marathon like some of us, (laughs) find a new hobby that is realistic for you to follow through on. And last but not least, in my 24 self-care tips that are 100 times better than any New Year's resolution, meditate. This is my last self-care tip of 2023, and I cannot think of a better, more impactful self-care tip. Now, here's the thing, folks. You've run out of road in the overstimulation department. This time of year can feel super heavy, and after all the overindulging and 
over socializing and overexposure to family, it's time to dial it all back and sit in silence. Now, I know this is super uncomfortable for a lot of people. I hear you. I got the ADHD and meditating was like nails on a chalkboard. But this one simple, easy, free thing that you can do will give you back so much more than you ever put into it. You could start by downloading apps like Insight Timer or Calm. Or you could just practice by setting a timer on your phone. Find a way to make this your number one priority because it does so much in one task. You do this. You figure out a way to meditate every day. And next year, you're going to be so connected, so peaceful, and so centered that if you did want to set a New Year's resolution, you could. And you'd achieve it. All right, friends, happy new year, everyone. Please be safe out there and let's aim to not do more in 2024. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. If you have a story you'd like to share and you want to be on the show, please email me. It's Chris, K-R-I-S, at selfcareissexy.com. We've got some really great content coming this way this year, so stay tuned and remember that self-care is sexy. We're giving you permission to put yourself first.